All right. Hey, this is Christine from Soulful Selling Bootcamp, and I'm here with David Hamilton from, is it Evolution? Yes, Evolution. Evolution, we're going. Yeah, yeah, I'm so excited. We had such an interesting conversation we did, uh, last yep. week, and we met in person yesterday for the yes. first time, which was so cool. Right here at, at the Green Spaces. That's such Very a cool, cool feng shui, green, recycled, yeah. hip, funky co-working space. space. I'm outside on my patio because it's still nice in California. That's I'm lucky. That's more green than here even. <laughs> <laughs> Until like a squirrel yeah. like, <laughs> comes behind me and jumps on my shoulder because um, <laughs> I saw him hanging out over here before. Cool. So where do you want to start? So why don't we give you, why don't you do a little background on yourself first? So me, I'm David Hamilton. I'm a professional coach and I have worked with all types of people, but I've worked a lot with what I focus on in evolution is with high achievers, high performers, uh, entrepreneurs, execs, career professionals that really want to have more success. They want to have more ease and flow and really have the whole picture of success and satisfaction together. A lot of times they'll come to me and they've been successful, but they're stressed out and they're not seeing the way to um, make things not only more enjoyable, but they don't want to continue on the path that they're on because if they do more of that, they don't want any more of that kind of success. They want more success, but not that way. They may want, want more money. They uh, may want to up, you know, get to a next job position or grow something in a company, but the way they are, they are performing is not, it's not working for them. Right. And, and so in evolution, now I also do have another uh, coaching business called social expression, which helps men that um, are socially challenged, let's say. So that could mean they have challenges in social skills and interacting with people and confidence in interacting with people and that guys, right those affects are their career guys. sorry say that again those are your shy guys right those are my shy guys they could shy social anxiety not always do they have a ton of that sometimes they just they might be kind of socially awkward uh, to put in their own words they may have trouble connecting and not understand why they can say hi to somebody and then they leave right like the person leaves or did i do something wrong and they really don't know why and so they'll come to me for that i have clients like that so yeah that's what i do i live here in denver play some music, hang out with my friends, do some Tai Chi, stuff like that, and, and awesome. love making new friends like you through cool. social media, through however. Yeah, so Dave and I met in a class, and I think, I don't know if we have people from the class on here, but we were in, I, I guess you call it a class, right? Um, yeah, definitely. Share your heart, show your work with the amazing Allison Crow. Um, so, and it was such an interesting class because it really was about people who, um, had something great to offer the world and just weren't really sharing it with enough people for whatever reason. It could be confidence. It could be, um, I think it's mostly confidence, but it could be, you know, they didn't know the right way or they were worried about how to share it. Um, it was a very interesting class. Amazing. And I was so um, interested in what you do and the conversations we, you had. And um, l let me just give a quick background on me. Um, but I really want to talk about the email that you sent me because I was like that I want to start talking about that. Um, but I'm Christine Pereira. I'm from Soulful Selling Bootcamp, and I am doing a series of interviews with soulful sellers, people that I have recognized who have amazing sales skills, whether that's because they've learned them over time or because they just intuitively um, have been always working that way. And so I wanted to do a quick interview series um, with some of these people because I think they all came from different backgrounds. I interviewed Angela Brooks last week. Uh, she's a network marketer. And she used to be a nurse and she was so interesting because I think that's someone who was naturally someone who shared just from her nursing background and was really authentic. And she transferred that to sales and she was a natural salesperson. So Dave is really interesting because he's a coach and he works with shy guys. Obviously, shy guys, I, I would say, probably have a lack of confidence. Um, so I thought well, that was so interesting. But the email you sent me <laughs> was about how sales is um, is a dirty word for so many people. And I thought, like, we have to talk about that. That's so interesting. Um, and we talked about that a little bit before. But do you want to, like, tell me your take on that? Because I definitely see that. And I've worked in sales for 15 yeah. years. I should have given that background. I, um, you know, worked in digital advertising for big companies, small yeah. companies, startups. Um, so I've been doing sales for a long time. But um, I am also an introvert. So I'm, but I'm very curious uh, because I think that's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you know, I was thinking too, mar it was it? sales is a dirty word. I was trying to make it, marketing is a mean word sometimes because we're talking about marketing, right, for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've been talking about how some people don't even like the word sales. 
And I yeah. totally agree with that. I mean, I used to not even tell people I was a salesperson if I met them at parties. I mean, that's what I did. But I would say, oh, I work in digital media. Um, I don't know why. It just, yeah. And I've kind of, I've gotten over that. But yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, we just have bad connotations with it. We have, you know, the used car salesman pops up in, in mind often, at least for me. Yeah, for everyone, um, right? To be sold maybe. And it's in, like we were talking about, the best sa sales, you don't really feel like you're being sold. You feel like you're buying something. Yeah. I remember uh, I was part of this entrepreneurs group called Three to Five, and they said, you have buying conversations. You don't have selling conversations. Right. But in the end of the day, I, I it's called sales to me. Now, if... Well, you they know, also, what were you saying in, in coaching? A lot of times they call it client creation, right? Enrollment, client creation. Mm -hmm. Coaches are super scared of selling. <laughs> right. But like all of those words, it's like, it's, it's about sales. And that's what, why I think it's so important because people are do, like, especially someone who's working in coaching, right? That's like an amazing business where you're really helping people and you're not doing it you know, for the money, I don't think you're doing that because you have like this amazing gift and you want to help people. And to, if you don't have enough clients, you can't stay in business. Right. So it's like sales is really, really important. Um, but I think it's the same in like the nonprofit and green space. And I, um, do some volunteering with some nonprofits and I worked in, um, like kind of like this green space for a while. And it's the same thing there. They talk all about growing their business, but no one ever talks about sales. And it's like, you can create this like amazing, like the next big thing um, that's incredible. But if no one buys it, yeah, what do you do? Yeah. And you know, it's a different model because here at green spaces, a lot of, you know, there's nonprofits, there's of course, for-profit corp corporations. There's a new one called the, it's like the, L3C or the B Corp, which mm -hmm. is a social enterprise, oh, I heard about that. Mm -hmm. right? Which is a for-profit socially conscious. So they triple bottom line is one thing where you're trying to make an impact. You're trying right. to be profitable. And actually the fact that you're profitable is based on the fact that you're making some kind of social or environmental impact. It has to be tied in for right. it to be a for-profit social enterprise. So the nonprofit model isn't, as far as I understand, really built around there, I mean, it's called nonprofit. So sales, it's it's more like they have to raise funds. They have to mm -hmm. constantly. So, right. But that's <laughs> still selling. Getting someone to donate money right. is absolutely selling. Which is still selling. Absolutely. And there's yeah. that book um, by Daniel Pink to sell as human. Mm -hmm. One out of nine people are salespeople. If you own your business, I'm a salesperson, you're a salesperson. Anybody owns their business. And when they start out, certainly if they're a solopreneur, unless they have a salesperson, they are a salesperson. Right. You are. You have no choice if you're you're sure. doing it, whether you know it or not, and you're responsible for it. Um, but one out of nine are direct and everybody else, every eight out of nine, the rest of us are still in sales in a persuasive thing. A nurse has to sell a doctor on the right procedure for a patient, what she thinks. Oh, and they have to sell the patients. Yeah. And that's what I was talking to Angela about. I'm like, that's got to be the hardest sales job, convincing a sick person to either take their medication or to do whatever. And yeah, I mean, that's I'm like, wow, that's like the ultimate sales job, right? Or even a parent to their kids yeah. trying to get my kids to do almost anything is like definitely <laughs> a sales job for sure. I mean, yeah. parents are right. definitely, you know, have to be salespeople. Absolutely. And I, and you know, this dirty word thing about sales, we should address it because this is the mindset piece. Mm -hmm. I, I got to admit, if I hear the word sales, part of me, like in this conversation, not so much, but if it's like, how do I make more sales and how do I get people's clients? Even that kind of language can really, you're going out to get some something from someone instead of what sales really is, is there's this value here that's being given that somebody is intrigued by or really could see how I really want that. And they're coming towards you. And I think that's, to me, that's also a model of how you set up your business and where marketing comes in. How do, how do people find out about you? Because without marketing, there's no sales. Without anybody right. knowing who you are, there's, right. no, there's no one to sell to or no one to buy from you. Mm -hmm. But you're so right. It is so much of a mindset. And there's these people who say, you know, it's, it's very hard for me to ask for, or I can talk about my business all day long, but when it comes to asking, I don't feel right. And it, that really is so much of a mindset because, it's really, you know, if you look at selling as serving someone or what you can do that you're, you know, providing your gift to them, 
then it's much different than saying like, I'm pushing this on them because, right. you know, I always say all entrepreneurs do not become entrepreneurs because they're like, you know, in most cases trying to scam a bunch of people, they're doing it because they're sharing something that they really love. Being an entrepreneur is hard. It's not, you know, a job you pick because you like want to have an easy life, right? It's, it's yeah. because you want to share something really amazing, whether it's something you created, maybe some part of yourself, whatever it is, but yeah. Yeah. I think that's so important. And so I think in that book as well, they talk about who are the best salespeople between introverts, extroverts. Oh, interesting. And what does it say? And it says, and since we're talking about building business as an introvert, um, it says, of course, ambiverts are tend to be the best <laughs> who are right in the middle. What is that? Oh, that's someone who's right in the middle. Oh, that's In the middle. Ambi is like ambidextrous. Like you can do both. Uh -huh. But Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you can't be good on either side, but extroverts tend to be, you know, according to this book, more action taking, more leading, more moving it forward. Right. Um, but that can get in the way because they may not listen as much as an introvert. Now, an introvert may be too hesitant because introverts tend to, if you read like Susan Cain, Power of Introverts, tend to think before they speak. Mm -hmm. And so if you're in a meeting with a bunch of extroverts and you're an introvert, you may never feel like you get a chance to speak because all the extroverts are right, and right. listening and thinking, and you may have something good to say. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, and that's something I also help help people do as well to, to kind of how do they handle that being the more introverted and also, you know, what fits them. And so. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So how do how would you advise someone like that? Yeah. So, <clears throat> well, the first thing is, for, we always have to adjust the mindset because a lot of what's happening is when somebody gets into a thought loop of, well, this is too much for me. I can't handle it. Um, I, um, I'm, I'm the introvert here. I'm, I'm, I can't speak up. I'm not assertive enough. All these thoughts we can use introvert as a limit. We can use it as a, a victimization game too. Mm -hmm. And I see that there's nothing that drives me crazier as an introvert when it turns into self victimizing through introversion. Right. And you're kind of using as, as an excuse, right? Right. And it doesn't mean you have to be as lively as a particular extrovert. And also extrovert doesn't mean people are lively. I have an extroverted friend who's very, very chill, more chilled out than I am mm -hmm. who actually struggle with some social anxiety and talk about really painful an extrovert with social anxiety because extroverts recharge their energy right out and about around people. That's a very painful thing if they have this, because they don't want to be yeah, home. Right. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. And let's just talk about for people who are not familiar. Some people do think still an introvert is someone who's shy, which is not necessarily the case. Um, and I learned this a couple of years ago. Cause I was like, I never was sure like am I an introvert or an extrovert, but I would um, be really drained when I was in big, groups of people, or if I had to go to a conference and I had to be like talking the entire day, I would just be wiped out. And so an introvert is someone who gets recharged, you know, by quiet time and an extrovert is someone who gets recharged by, you know, feeding on the energy of a, of a big group. Um, so when I learned that, I was like, Oh, well, I'm definitely an introvert, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think some people still get that confused and think, well, I'm shy, so I must be an introvert or, um, you know, I worked in sales. So that's why I always thought, well, maybe I'm an extrovert because I'm comfortable talking about that, but I definitely don't, you know, love big group social situations. Yeah. And, and that's the, the, it's like, we can have the little crosshairs that I saw once on YouTube. I love this. We can have, um, ex, you know, introvert, extrovert or extrovert, introvert, however you want to do it. I don't want to necessarily put introvert on the bottom, but let's, let's say, you know, introvert, extrovert, and then shy to social like that. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times because I'm introverted because that, and I've become a social introvert. I was a shy introvert. Now I've become a social introvert mm, because I chose to, because I wanted to. Allison says the same thing. I've been saying that for years. Um, you don't have to be mm -hmm. social if you don't want to, there's nothing wrong with that. If you don't, you know, but the people that, that I work with and that I hear from a lot and that email me and that comment on my YouTube videos and stuff want to be connecting with people and social. Right. And so that has to be kind of dislodged as well. That story that, well, shy means introverted. Right. And and it's so means. interesting with social media. Um, I was talking to someone about this, that if you are an introvert, you there's it's so much easier or more comfortable to be social now with social media, things like Blab, Facebook, right? Because you don't get drained the way you would going to like a big group event, right? 
So mm -hmm. people who are traditionally introvert or who are introverts, right, could be very, very successful in um, like online marketing or in social media because there's not that whole, you know, you are connecting with people, but it's online. So you can take a break when you want. You can tune out when you want. So it's kind of interesting. Um, I feel like new career path for introverts. Right. Because, yep. um, and then it's cool because you can connect with people all over the world, too. So there's all these benefits to it. And, um, you know, a lot of people do talk about how, you know, people aren't talking face to face now. And I agree with that. But I also think there's great benefits to technology, especially for people who, you know, traditionally have, have not felt comfortable, like maybe running businesses because they're introverts. Yeah, that's that's true. And I was talking with a guy here last night as as the party was getting started, the kind oh, yeah. of social happy hours you were leaving. Um, and he's like doing some some work with an organization, some transformation work. And he, he was saying how he realized in this workshop, he had built a business eight years completely on his own by himself, no employees, no anybody, because he wasn't comfortable with dealing with people. And you could tell that he's now he's kind of like, what, you know, he's, he's successful. He's very successful. You can absolutely do that. That's the good news because for him, you can tell that he wants to connect with people more and he didn't realize he was doing this and he hasn't done anything wrong, you know, or anything like that. But um, that it's totally possible this day and age more than ever to do that. And it's actually a cool thing. I mean, my business, I'm a business of one plus a virtual assistant. Mm -hmm. Of course, I have a lot of clients that I coach on the phone and in person if they come out to Denver and stuff like that. But it's kind of the way I wanted to design my business mm -hmm. um, because I want to be able to have the freedom and flexibility if I grow my staff and this and that. But for me, I didn't design it so that I could not be around people. It was because I wanted to design it this way. Mm -hmm. So... <clears throat> That is the beauty of it. And it depends on what you want. If we're talking about the shy or social thing, if you want, if you're shy and again, because you're introvert doesn't mean you're shy. It's totally fine. And it's, it's wonderful that people can do it, but it doesn't mean that there, there may not be some pain there. They don't know how, well, I actually do want to connect with people. I built it this way. Now I built myself into a bit of a trap, mm -hmm. which is easy to fix. Actually. It's right. still a mind thing. Mm -hmm. So what are like the biggest, I guess, talking about that, like what are the biggest, pitfalls that you see when someone's shy or introverted, either one, right? Cause they might not be both the same. Like how, like what are the biggest pitfalls I guess you see when they're, you know, these types of people are creating businesses and, and how do you advise them? Um, you know, the, the first thing that comes to mind is um, if, they, you know, when they're coming to me for the social help, first of all, the, the expectation I think of social is this, super gregarious person, mm -hmm. which isn't true at all. So true. Yeah. So I agree. That expectation. Mm -hmm. You can be really social and be more of the question asker mm -hmm. rather than the one talking more. And actually that's, as you know, in sales, that's the most, more powerful way to sell is when they're talking. Yeah. More. The quiet person yeah. that you should be, you know, they always say in sales, you should be listening 90% of the time and talking 10% of the time. Yeah. And I think you're exactly. right. There's so many misconceptions like that, but I think, yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Being social doesn't mean you need to be like telling jokes to everybody. Right. <laughs> no, it doesn't. And, and like a lot of times I'll talk about people, like, I don't know how to handle a group or this or that. And it's like, you handle it one person by one person. There are mm -hmm. individuals in this group and, but they're seeing in their mind, this huge group and it's getting overwhelming because of how the thought is configured in their mindset. Right. So we have to get them to start to, sh okay, it's just, one by one by one. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's how I see it. I see small groups in there. I, I, I'm never like, Hey guys, what's up? Hey, I'm Dave. It's like, <laughs> I don't think anybody does that. Right. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Um, Tony maybe a super <laughs> gregarious person <laughs> needs to get the party started. Like, let's get the party started. But right. how often do you see that? Like, yeah, not, like, no. maybe, yeah, maybe on a stage. Right. <laughs> right. So, that's that's the first one is that management of the expectation of what's it going to mean to be social. Um, the second thing is to dislodge the shyness and introversion thing as it comes up. Well, because I'm an introvert, because I'm an introvert, which is mm. anything after because is, a, is usually a, a limiting reason. Now, I'm not saying there's not something to being introverted. Uh, and one thing I talk about is energy management. You've got to have your downtime as introverts. We recharge alone. Mm -hmm. And yes, introverts can tend to be shy more than extroverts because 
they spend more time alone. That shyness thing can happen or social anxiety is easier for it to happen. So we do have more introverts that are shy, deal with social anxiety, stuff like that. But to make that an absolute is, is um, to pull something from uh, cognitive therapy is a, is a distortion. Mm -hmm. Always or never. Right. Those words come out of somebody's mouth. That's always the distortion. That's always their belief or their assessment or how they see things. Yeah, that's true. We all do it too. We do it too, right? We'll do it. Oh, it always happens this way. It always happens that way, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, working with that, that, that'd be the second big thing um, that I see. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, yeah, those are the two main ones. Those yeah. Are two main ones. And that's so interesting because what you're saying about kind of like the perception that a, like an out or a or more sociable person needs to be really outgoing. I think that's the same with sales too. And I see that a lot where people are like, well, I don't really be salesy. And um, I get that. I, I totally understand that. But I'm like, when's the last time you saw a person who was really salesy? I mean, yeah. car car salesman. Yeah, maybe if you bought a car recently. Um, but like, when's the last time you got, really got a hard sell where someone like really, actually, you had a good story about, do you want to share that story you shared with me? Which one is someone it? Someone called you on the phone and kind of said, you know, you have to make a decision. I don't know. If you're talking about that. Oh, so you have told me. I'll tell you. <laughs> you tell me. You someone, um, I, I forget. It was for someone who was um, calling you, and they said in the beginning of the conversation, they said, at the end of this conversation, you have to say yes or no. Oh, yeah. Oh, that? I was like, God, that's terrible. Who does that anymore? Oh. Yeah, that was, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that was just like, and I, here, it was something I was already a little nervous about, right. this service I, that that I, I was being right? sold. What's that? That was a phone conversation, right? Yeah, that was a phone call. It was like a webinar I watched Mm -hmm. on how to build business using Facebook. And And was this the first time you had talked to this person? Yeah, this is the first time. Wow. And they did that? Um, And they started out the conversation? Yeah, and you start out the conversation. Okay. So on this call, by the end, I want a yes or a no. I don't want any maybe in between stuff. And Hmm. I think what he was meaning you know, and because I study sales, it, he was really talking, trying to talk about action because it was supposed right. to be a call to help you, right? right. A strategy right. call. But, you know, everybody is sensitive, usually most jumping onto a call like that. We know well, there's something for sale. Someone that doesn't really establish trust, right? I mean, what do you None. think was going in his mind? Like, what do you think was his like theory when he said that? Cause I, I kind of am thinking a bunch of things, but um, yeah. it sounds like to me, he was a little bit nervous and not very confident if he, you know, usually the people who are u- using that kind of high pressure are either read some kind of book from a very long time ago or think that's how you're supposed to do it. Um, I don't think most mm-hmm. people are comfortable doing that yeah. or they kind of have this belief that like, there's not enough for everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have this belief, mm-hmm. Like if I don't sell this person like somebody else's and it's only me or them, you know, I feel like there's some kind of limiting belief that person has when they're using those techniques. Yeah. Um, Giving you props there. That comes in. Um, that. I think, I think he is insecure and I think yeah. he probably, you know, my, my, my story, cause we can make up whatever story we want is he wasn't close enough deals. Cause he was a, a strictly a salesperson, I think. Yeah. And that company. is tough when you're a salesperson, you have a quota. I've been there. It's tough, especially if you know, cause you're tracking, they track your numbers and that, you know, obviously entrepreneurs don't have to do this, but at a, in a professional sales organization, they're looking at, sometimes they look at how many outgoing calls do you do that day? What's your close ratio? And I, I've seen people react that way when they're getting down to the wire, especially at the end of the month, because that's when the numbers yeah. close or at the end of the quarter. And they're like, I gotta close these or else I'm going to get fired or I'm not going to make my commission. Um, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a fight or flight thing. It's yeah. That's like someone managing based on you know, scarcity or fear, which I don't think is a very good management tactic. But I, you know, I talked to my sister a lot about this because she works in a big technology company where she manages a sales team. And she does notice that there's a lot of people who still use these methods of fear and um, kind of threats to motivate their salespeople, which mm-hmm. clearly if you do any research on human psychology, you realize carries them a line. not the best motivator, but people yeah. are still doing that because that's the way they've always done it. Um, which is really unfortunate, but that's interesting. And so let me share a story I had very recently, which I think is similar because I was in a meeting with someone 
And um, this is like a consulting client I have. And there was someone who was like on the same team that I was. And I gave some advice to the person we were talking to that happened to be about another company, not about our company, because that's the way I approach business as a whole. I believe I should be sharing information. I'm a resource. I'm an expert. That's how I position myself. So, you know, I wasn't saying it, it, it wasn't like you can buy this company or this company, but he was asking about a technology that I knew a lot about. And I said, you know, if it was me, I would do this. But, you know, to, like, I'm happy to give you, you know, my background on it. And it was so interesting because the person that was with me was very offended by that. And he actually said, OK, let's not start talking about our company. And I thought about that a lot because he was very upset that I had brought that up. And I thought this person has a belief somewhere that there is not enough for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I thought that is really too bad that he sees it that way, because first of all, I didn't reflect on him very positively in that meeting. Um, and, you know, we were I was helping this potential client um, and building the relationship. And I just thought that's that's not a good way to go about sales. Right. So not only do you have to have that mindset that you're helping, but also that there is enough for everybody, right? There's not a limit, you know, people are gonna buy tons of different products and they might be, buy several of the same product. Um, so I think that, that was, that really opened my eyes that that's another like kind of mindset issue that people have in sales. Yeah, um, I mean, it's just any, any kind of scarcity brings fear. Right, yeah, it does. And they kind of take that a little openness. bit in some sales circles, right? They say you have to create scarcity, you have to create scarcity. And I'm a great mm -hmm. component, like you don't don't create fake scarcity. I mean, if there is like a time limit or something, that's fine. But um, yeah, you're, yeah, I think that's true. Yeah. And it's anytime we come from abundance, we feel better, which relaxes our state, mm -hmm. which makes us more present, which allows us to be more em empathetic, which allows us to listen more and actually hear the concerns of the person and address them. And then right. if we're a match for them, whether mm -hmm. a product or service, in services, I, I saw a statistic where 70% of the businesses in the U.S. is service-based. Oh, wow. Interesting. I saw that the other day. So, you know, and it's it's selling selling a service is different than a product. You were talking about that yesterday, right? Of it's It's when you sell a service, since you're performing it, it's easy to get caught up that you are the product. And in a sense, we can, we can say that. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of times with coaches... Um, there's this phrase of getting paid what I'm worth. Mm -hmm. And I once heard God, it said, that like hurts it's not when I hear you, that you're priceless. Yeah. It's what you provide yeah. in a service. And I think that should be dissociated um, from me, from you, from whoever that person is, whatever you're providing. It's Yeah, because when I hear that, I think you have to put a price on yourself. You know, and that's, and we were saying yesterday, I was saying coaching is probably the hardest thing ever to sell because it's very easy to sell Girl Scout cookies, right? Or some kind of product. But when you're selling your, not just yourself, like your coaching, which is kind of like who you are and your philosophy, I'm like, it doesn't get more personal than that, right? That's like, you're going really deep. And there's like, I can see why it's very challenging for coaches to sell because you're selling like everything about you and you know, like no one's perfect. Everyone knows, you know, if you're a coach, you probably spend a lot of time thinking about, you know, like working on self-acceptance and thinking about things you can do better. And I mean, I just think that that would be an extremely challenging um, thing. And then to talk about worth, right. And mm -hmm. to have to think, because if someone thinks about that the right way, you know, what is my worth, right? Of course we'd all like to say we're invaluable, but at the end of the day, you still have to name a price. Yeah. And there's, there's so many factors that go into it. Yeah. You know, the lifestyle you want, right? Goals in your business, yeah. how you want to serve people. You know, if there's a market, depending on where. If we talk about value-based businesses versus commodity-based versus right. intermediate, which is in the middle, and so we're talking about value-based selling, which, yeah, in a way, is you know what differentiates me from a lot. Of, well, certainly, one thing differentiates me is I do have a niche with the. Um, helping the shy guys, the guys that struggle with shows challenges. Yeah. But if I'm coming in more like Allison, say, who is getting paid to be her, mm -hmm. which is, and Steve Hardison's another guy who does that. Mm -hmm. They just do this kind of general life coaching and they're successful at it because they are very, they push the edge of who they are out there so much mm -hmm. that people are attracted to that. But that in, in itself is sort of has a lot of value because a lot of people don't do that. They actually solve a problem, mm -hmm. an apparent problem, 
you have difficulty connecting with people, it's holding you back in your career, mm -hmm. it's holding you back in your dating, it's holding you back, you know, the coaching can help you get there. Right. right. If, and then, if, yeah, if you want it. I mean, geez, there's right? people who charge a hundred dollars an hour and people charge like a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, the range and coaching right. is yep. so vast and there's so, I mean, it, it would be very hard. I would think to not compare yourself to others and think like, well, where am I in that? in that picture, am I the hundred dollar an hour coach or I want to be the hundred thousand dollar coach. But I mean, you have to, you, you know, you have to feel that, right. You have to feel like, yeah. feel that you're worth there. And that's tough. I don't know. I don't think I would not worth a hundred thousand dollars. Maybe, I don't know, <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's tough. Well, it also depends on, it depends on the clients and what they're looking right. for. It just, it's so, the more it gets value based, the more it's just completely arbitrary and made up right. based on the needs that they have to be solved. Right. The more that I study business and, and do coaching and whatever. I mean, I know a coach who he, he coaches high end people. He says, if you don't charge at least a hundred thousand dollars, they won't listen to you because these guys have 80 million liquid right. net right. worth. Yeah. Yeah. You try to charge them a hundred dollars that you're not even, they're, they're not going to. Yeah. I mean, You're I like that mentality, yeah. but most of so us are not talking people. about. Yeah. Most people are not yeah. pitching those people. So, I mean, yeah. I, th I mean, I, I totally understand that, but I don't yeah. know if that many coaches relate to that. Not everyone's coaching a, like a billionaire or potentially. Uh, right. But you know, yeah, that's interesting, but it just brings in, you know, the thoughts that people have about money, the fact that you do have to put a dollar amount on it and you do have to charge it, you know, someone. I think that is part of why people think sales is a dirty word because sales is associated with money, right? And anytime you bring money into the equation, um, you know, it, it changes it. Hey, so Leaf has a question. What's the current topic of focus? So we're talking about um, sales and um, introverts and how to grow your business as an introvert. But right now we're actually talking about coaching and working as a coach and um, how to value right. yourself and, and the money involved in that. Yeah. And we're talking about the, some of the business things of, of value-based business versus commodity and why it's easier to sell a commodity, a commodity potentially than a value-based thing. It's, it's a different kind of sale. It's a more right. advanced sale would be value-based. Right. Right. Um, you know what I, else I wanted to talk about where we, we had a, dis, uh, a discussion about was taking baby steps because we were saying, you know, it's really hard especially if you're just getting started in sales or in, in like all of these different um, things, whether it's like sharing your heart online and social media, whether it's starting in sales or starting a new business, it's like you have to take that very first baby step. And I'm sure you must coach people on this all the time, right? On the first baby step? Yeah, I'm just, just taking like a little it? step because it's like not everybody can go out and be like, okay, now I'm going to, you know, generate $300,000 in sales you know, yeah, no. there's little steps you have to take to get there. And um, I think I was sharing you, with you my experience on Periscope where, um, you know, I do quite a few scopes now. Um, I don't do them every day, but um, I, and I really enjoy it. But it took me a long time to get there where I kept waiting and waiting. And I was like, I don't know what I'm waiting for. I just don't want to do it. Um, you know, and I, I was kind of scared. And then once I did it, I was like, oh, my God, why did like that was so easy? Why did I wait so long? But I see that you know, a lot of people, times people are afraid to take that first step. And it's like, what makes you take that first step? Like what yeah. do you tell people like with that? Cause I don't know. I'm always like, well, you just do it. But I mean, that's obviously not, does not work for everybody. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, and it depends where the person's at and what experience have they ever sold before? Have they ever had a business before? Have they ever, there's a lot of things that goes into it. If they're afraid before you can sell, you have to have something to offer. If they have nothing to offer, what can, you know, there's, yeah. there's certain steps that, that right have to occur. It's what are you offering? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And it, it sort of doesn't matter as much because that's going to evolve and grow over time. There's got to be something. Mm -hmm. And then we can look at business models and, and all that stuff. Looks like we got a question from, uh, Car is it Vergara? Is it Carlo? Is that your name? My man. Um, he's talking commodities would have lower margins. Yes. Even graphic design, which is, used to be very value-based has been commoditized somehow. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, I would say it's, it's probably more of an intermediate, intermediate business, but it's toward, yeah, it's going more towards a commodity depending, but it also depends, you know, that's the niche conversation. Um, and that's why and that comes down to marketing. Like you were saying, like you have yeah. a great niche with shy guys, which I think is great. And, um, yeah. you know, like my niche is say, I wouldn't really consider myself a, a coach, but in a lot of ways I am like a sales coach because I'm teaching people, yeah. you know, how to grow their business and how to grow with sales. Yeah. It's a niche and you know, the whole thing about pick a niche 
work, you know, <laughs> does it work? Um, yeah, and that's just a marketing. Not necessarily. Yeah, you're right. Well, it depends on ni <laughs> what niche. If you pick the right one, right, and then like what you do yeah. with that. Uh, and if, many you know, I like let the niche find you as much as you're trying to find it. If that's what you want to do. So for our friend Carlo here, um, you know, it's kind of like, have you thought about, you know, helping a particular type of company, you know, even within technology companies, there's so many out there now. Is it going to be some kind of app company, some kind of, you know, whatever it is, I don't know. Um, because unless unless you have a good refer, maybe you have a couple clients that really love you and refer you out a lot, um, that it can be a really useful thing to take a look at, huh? Who could I, where's their need and who could I serve? I think it's a right. useful thing to take a look at. Um, oh, there's Allison's coming on. She would probably just, she heard us talking about her. <laughs> We're talking about you, Allison. Um, <laughs> All good things. We're talking about niches. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I think though for, you know, there's a lot to be said for service though. Um, and even on something like graphic design, um, I think, you know, you can really make a differentiate yourself by being someone who's very dependable. And I always um, teach this in sales, too, because I find that it's so um, it's something that so rarely happens that you find this one person that's like completely dependable, that is always super professional, um, you know, and that always meets the expectations that you have. Um, yeah. I heard this really interesting podcast with um, these girls who created green smoothies. Are you familiar with this company? It's huh. moms who created like this smoothie company and they really started it on Instagram. And the one thing they did differently, first of all, they like made sure the design, they were like one of them was a designer. So it was kind of interesting. She said like people really care about the design and then they just gave a little bit more free content um, than everybody. Everybody else would say, you have to go to my website and you have to, you know, buy my, um, my ebook to get all the recipes. And they would be putting them right in the, um, in the Instagram photo, which nobody else was doing. And I was like, that's really like a servicing, like you're giving out, a lot more because you know that um, you're going to get more in return and you're going to get more followers. And they built like 30,000 followers in a month or something. Um, but they noticed that no one else was doing that. So it's like kind of like find that angle that no one else is doing. And I think even in a business like graphic design or in coaching, like we've seen um, where there are so many people doing it, you can find that like, you know, that one thing that's not being dealt with shy guys, whatever it is. Yeah. And it, it, there's a lot to it. Cause there's a lot of, there's, there's online services for the shy stuff coming out and they're, I look at them, they're really great. Yeah. And then, but it's also, they do something different than I do. Right. Right. You know, and that's what I've seen. And I help a particular type of guy more than ever. That's more middle-aged that's been dealing with this for a while that stuck in their career a little more and they want a particular result that I, some, some people help with the anxiety only. Mm -hmm. I help with that and I help, how are you going to build it out? Cause I know how to do that. I've done it. A lot of people that do certain things have not necessarily done it mm -hmm. or done it in the same way or come from a man's perspective. That's and so that's why no one's done it the same way. Right. No one does yeah. it exactly like you do it. No one yeah. has your background and, um, you know, applies it the way that you do. Oh, Allison's hi, Allison. She said hi a little while ago, but you were, um, here's a rock and roll. And so, um, do you want to read it? Go. Yeah. Um, let's see. So <laughs> I'm on my laptop. I can read it if it's easier. Oh yeah, go for it. Why don't you go? I did the last one. I'm one. trying to find a good niche term to describe solopreneurs who work with groups. Mm. For example, teachers, coaches, speakers, mm. facilitators, business leaders, and who are wanting to expand their reach and impact, but finding that various inner blocks, for example, fears, limiting beliefs, and lack of know-how are getting in the way. <laughs> totally. Interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Send them to, they need a coach. <laughs> they definitely need, I mean, that's, that's, that's the thing too. Yeah. Is, is that's getting, so I interesting. Think that is, though, that is a like, very big problem do do? that we both identified. Um, Creative facilitation and a coach and too. Coach, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, I think that's where the, um, the mentoring is more like what to do in the coaching to me is like getting them through the, the limits and stuff mm -hmm. and having both skill sets is really powerful. Right. Um, that's what I do. I know that's probably what, well, you're going to have to do some of it <laughs> now that you're, you're right. Some of the inner stuff you yeah. do, the, you do the what to do. Allison does both as well. I know yeah. Allison does both. Well, what I've noticed with coach or with sales is that really um, a big part of that is like all the inner work, right? Like I always say, or I've been saying lately, 80% of sales is confidence. If you don't have that confidence part there, then you can't really do like, it doesn't matter if you learn negotiation skills or like how to price or how to prospect new clients. Because if you don't have that confidence, 
like you're not going to be ready to do that. So um, yeah. and it's, it's funny, the more that I talk about it, the more I realize there's a lot of different layers in confidence. There's, you know, following your intuition, there's kind of owning your self, your, I say your sales style, but it's really like who you are, like owning it. Like, don't try to be someone you're not. Don't try to be super social or extroverted. If you're not, you don't have to, it doesn't yeah. cross right. Yeah. Um, Leaf is, <laughs> Leaf is, should we, do you, do you want to bring, do you want to bring him in the seat? Um, yeah. Leaf, do you want to join play? us? All right. Yeah. Here we go. I think that might be easier. Uh, you should stay on. We're going to bring you on here. too. Hey guys. Hey. What's up? Hey Leaf. Where are you Welcome. from, Leaf? Um, I'm from the Seattle area. Oh, no way. I used to live in Madison Park. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah. I lived in Madison Park for uh, a couple high school years. Oh, no okay. way. Great area. Yeah. I love Seattle. Near Bush School. I was Leaf from Bush, which was uh, which kind of embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So tell us more about um, about this. is really interesting because I mean we're we're talking about this as well. I just kind of popped in and saw that you know that there were some commonalities between what you guys do and also the the side of people who are either shy or introverted. And um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I get to do a lot of fun stuff, both the personal and professional development, team building, and things like that. But one of the offers I'm focusing on now is creating an online class for um, people, like I said, people who work with groups. And to a certain degree, that's any kind of solopreneur because nowadays you have to get out there, whether it's virtually like this or, you know, so you don't have to show up as like a, hi, I'm extroverted, but you do, <laughs> you do need to at least find the inner resourcefulness and the uh, skills and tools of engagement that make it a really valuable, mm -hmm. uh, you know, whether it's a presentation or a teaching a modality or whatever. So I've got this really cool stuff, but I don't know. Uh, and my, my specialization is in the world of applied improvisation. So it's the principles of improv and the, the oh, games and activities cool. and um, do some blabs in that world. But I'm still, I'm trying to figure out a term that resonates for people, mm -hmm. you know, that, that work with groups. So, you know, saying solopreneurs who work with groups sort of works, but it doesn't really yeah, stand out. Like and sexy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not super sexy. And if I use leaders, well, <laughs> that could be someone that's in, you know, more of a corporate job and I'm not looking for that. So I'm just wondering if you guys have heard, I've heard terms like conscious entrepreneur, social entrepreneur, mm -hmm. change maker. Um, you know, if, if there's some terms that you found help speak to that crowd, cause it sounds like yeah. you do some of the same. Yeah. yeah. Well, Allison says badass motherfuckers. <laughs> badass <with> motherfuckers. <laughs> I love that. That's so funny because uh, Bamf, sorry. Bamf group is yeah. But I, I, like, I, I would focus more on like their pain point and what um like what it is that they are like what what they're feeling and what, what they need to accomplish, right? Like where they yeah. are now and what their block is and where they want to be. Like for me, I'm teaching sales skills, but like and it's funny, this has been an eye opener for me with um, when David was telling me, he's like, People don't like the word sales, and I'm like I, yeah, that's true. Like, <laughs> I like it, it's almost like I want to teach them that, but that's not necessarily what they want to learn. But right. the real issue with them is, especially as entrepreneurs, right, is if you don't sell enough, you're going to go out of business and you're not going to be able to do this business that you love. So how do I communicate that? And I've been kind of struggling with the same thing, but I realize that's the pain point, right? I might not be able to share, if I'm an entrepreneur, my special gift, the thing I'm so passionate about with the world, unless I make some money at it. Right. right. And I noticed oh, you throw the adjective soulful into your, at least your website there. So you help people know you're coming more from a heart place than just a yeah. sell, sell, sell. Yeah. Place. And that's why I call it soulful selling. And people like, like that, but yeah, I, I understand how people get freaked out by the, um, by the selling part. So what do you think the pain point is for your, um, for your, well, I mean, I, I know the, the, the pain points that come up and that I have expertise around are the, the kind of the inner game issues, you know, confidence. I'm afraid I'm shy. I don't visibility. I don't want to, you know, being visible and transparent and authentic. Yeah. The, uh, what I call almost like the, 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 the lack of know-how in terms of what, how do I go beyond just words? How do I, you know, use activities and make, how do I really make my events and my group engagement stand out? Cause we're in a world where people are overwhelmed with information. So one of my differentiators is you're going to have to know how to really do transformative work, like do right. something that really, you know, for example, I, I spoke at inbound. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that. It's about a 15,000 person conference in Boston 
oh, wow. um, about a month and a half ago and decided to play around a little bit. So I had everybody stand up. Uh, I had everybody write on a piece of paper something of value they were willing to give away mm -hmm. and their contact information, had them stand up, crumple the pieces of paper and have a massive paper fight. <laughs> and so, you know, it was sort of more of a, here's a way you can create instant value and have fun. And they're going to remember that more than just a bunch of words that were talked at them. So, so basically helping people with the confidence stuff, the interactivity stuff and the technology pieces. What are the, the new technologies that help you to increase your yeah. reach and your impact? Yeah. And what you're talking about, Hey, Allison, do you want to join? Because, um, Allison Crow just taught this class that is very much, she just is saying like you're the male version. But I would agree because she really is teaching this. Hey, what's up? Hi, Allison. What's up? I suppose you should use badass, badass motherfuckers to work with. Because if not, I'm going to use it. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. Is a coach I that works with a lot of coaches, but she did just did this entire class on this about basically how you have to show your work. Um, so Allison, I was like, kept thinking like you're the expert in this, right? What do you think? What do I think? Yeah. Uh, well, I will tell you right now, I am really, there was a gal who just messaged me about being in the mastermind and I could tell she really wanted one-on-one -on -one coaching probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I noticed like, yeah, no, not there. I'm not there right now. Like I, I just kind of shut that down. I probably could have had a client like that, but I'm so turned on by kind of what you were talking about, Leith. It's a combination of the inner work the outer work, the technology. I like the holistic, not just the inner holistic, but the outer holistic approach too. And so um, my one of the big things I learned that really helped my coaching practice was don't sell people what you do, show them what you do, let them experience you. Mm. And so whether that's, um, that's why I love these live streaming things. Totally especially as an introvert. I just told the lady I was talking to, and I was like, I don't want to go down to the dadgum 6 a.m. B&I and trade cards with a fucking realtor. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> yeah, and we, we had that discussion, Allison, where it's like it's so much easier now if you're an introvert to build your business online because you're not drained. You can do all of this outreach. Yeah, and, it, um, it doesn't mean that you're like socially defunct. It just means that you right. – you, it takes energy to go be in social settings. And this allows us to use our skill and our personality by cutting out all that mid, middle energy. Um, but yeah, any way that you can, um, you know, it's almost like leave. I can imagine you doing something like facilitating a group of people like Christine and I are in a group and we're experimenting with Zoom, right? Where you get, you know, you do a, a large online conference where it's like Brady Bunch style like this, but you've got like 12 people and you facilitate from there and ex and kind of guide and lead and let people experience your work that way. I, I just, I'm all about that right now. Well, is I just literally finished a blab with uh, a peer of mine where we did use uh, improv facilitation to kind of do some brainstorming for people. So we'd have people give a business challenge and then we took improv games to help them. Have a yeah. And I yeah. am starting my very first zoom based mastermind group next week. Um, I've only got three people and I wanted to have five, but, um, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to experiment with that as well. Oh, post the link in here. Post the link because other people were interested, sure. might be interested in that. David and I were just saying we need a, like a good mastermind group that's small that um, is focused like specifically on just moving forward. Uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> you two have outgrown me. It's all good. Um, it's all good. I love it. Um, but what do you think? So, Allison, what do you like? How were you coaching people? Because I know you did. I think you had one on one conversations with some people, and I didn't see all the coaching calls. I'm like taking that first baby step because I think that's the hardest thing for all of, a lot of these people. Like, Lee, if you're saying like they're afraid, even maybe I think a lot of people, even on social media, to like get out there and just start posting. People have this fear, like. Eh. So, what, uh, help me understand what's your specific question. So, how do they, how do you get them or convince them or show them the benefit of taking that first baby step, like putting themselves out there? Um, let me think about this for a second. Say it one more time, Christine. Just really sorry. So, I was how thinking. do you convince, or how do you show someone that? How do you convince? How do you make yeah. them? How I do charge you really high fees and 
of taking that very <laughs> baby step of like putting themselves out there. Cause I always think that's the hardest part, right? Doing that first, taking that first step, like doing that, that first revealing post or personal post on Facebook or. I have a couple thoughts on that. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm I'll just throw out, like when I start a workshop, I'll say our goal over the next couple hours is to fail as much as possible. So instead of there being this like, what if I fail, actually setting that up as just like a kid that's learning how to, you know, walk or ride a bike that you are, you're, you know, let's get that possibility out of the way and say, actually, I want you to just fail miserably, you know, and just get it's, it's okay, you're going to fail. But also coaching people like to work with people like you or myself or, or Allison around um, getting the, the inner supports and the outer supports they need to feel safe enough. So that could look like on the inner side, that could be the coaching or the meditation or the whatever to get to a grounded space. And on the outer world, that might be, maybe you do your first Periscope with a friend that is you know, more confident and you have someone to hold your hand or maybe you're interviewing someone and, and that, you know, finding an element where you do feel more comfortable. Right. Um, but finding what's, what's the place that feels fun, like follow the fun. And- <laughs> He is totally the dude version of me. <laughs> follow the fun. Yeah. All right, Allison. Sounds like we got to talk. My freebie is called follow. Well, after 10 years of coaching, probably about eight years in, I realized that every single client I ever worked at, from hardcore sales to um, people that executives that own oil companies to hippy dippy people like me now, and artists, stay at home moms, everybody just wanted to feel good. And I'm very big on. David knows he's in a, a prosperity group that I run about following your feel good because when we follow obligation or expectation instead of the feel good, we create debt energy. Totally. And I, you use the word experiment too. Christine, I was thinking, you know, you actually, the question that you asked me, you're the perfect case study of that. Mm-hmm. Your story is the case study of that. So I don't mm-hmm. know if y'all realize, but Christine's 15 years. She's a legitimate badass. But that's the thing. One of the reasons it took you so years is because what she walked away from financially, what you walked away from was really cush and really easy on the outside. A lot of people yeah, would struggle outside. to have an income like that to be headhunted if you change jobs, mm-hmm. you know, you quit and then you've got somebody within 30 minutes is trying to get you back to come in. So she was in uh, advertising sales mm-hmm. in the tech world. And you know, as a coach, and somebody said it over here on the side, I don't have my glasses on, but you know, I can't, I can't make Christine want, I can hear her desire and all I can do is hold the energetic space for her desire. I can encourage her, ask her, you know, try to pull out her divine business manager. And then I also, I think, and David, you were talking about this and Leaf, it sounds like you do this too. It's a combination of the inner work. And then sometimes it's like, hey, here's the story of either me, my client, or a colleague of of what I know worked and you know this amazing thing that happened and then all of a sudden Christine gets to this one point where she's just like that's it I'm tired of talking about it I'm doing it and she walks away and never looks back and she got more done you've gotten more done in the last four months than you did in our first two years of working together Isn't that crazy? it yeah. was it was, but that's the thing. You were ready and it was the same thing when I left the corporate world it took me four years yeah. To leave, but when I left, was yeah. uh, did I make six figures in the first six months? Right. Yeah, you bet I did because I was ready. I was mm-hmm. ready. And so, right. how do we how do we get people to do that? I think that's the thing. Is you know, I I like to tell stories, especially if people know me and they've already paid to work with me. I know they like me, and I know they want something that I have, mm-hmm. right? And so, I share the first time I shared something. I share the story about how I'm on a stage and somebody asked me some question and I was on a coaching panel and for the first time ever I shared about struggling with depression and that I took meds and that I'd been taking meds since I was 24 years old. And my boss at the time shamed me afterwards. She's like, I would never have said that. And I was like, well, did you notice that I signed up 12 new clients and that there was a line 50 people out the door? And that's when it hit me. I remember thinking, this feels so scary, but something inside was saying, no, share your underbelly, share this authentic. Cause this, you know, this is 10 years ago. This is before. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I think. Is that the <laughs> overbelly or the underbelly? <laughs> right. So I think that we model it. That 
that's how is you yeah. model it. And I think that's what's so different, you know, about, and I know Christine and David both, like she's doing soulful selling. Um, my business is called soulful, soul dash full living. Yeah. And it's about how do we do this? How do we, how do we jump in the ring and not lose our soul? How do we jump in the ring, maintain our soul, share our heart, show our work and sell our services while giving and receiving soul back and forward to each other instead of um, the same damn sales page, yep. schmarm. Um, and, and I think people are hungry for, you know, why are we all on Blab? Could we be on a phone call? Yeah, but we're on Blab because then all of a sudden you get to meet somebody new that like totally vibes in the same place, like Lee yes. and all these other people that are on the side. <laughs> and it's like running into each other in a coffee shop that's titled, you guys have common interest. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. What a better way, what a great way. I think that mm -hmm. to build relationships. Yeah. Experimentation, the experimentation thing is huge because you know, I was talking with a client today and, um, you know, people will come there like, what are the steps and how do I get out there? And it's, you know, when you have to meet somebody where you're at, where they talk about with coaching a lot, I always tell people it's whatever it takes and whatever works for you. We're going to try a bunch of shit. We're going to try a bunch of shit and see what works for you because, and I get certain people that want, tell me what to do. Tell me the next step. Tell me it. And I eventually have to coach them on stop doing that. Stop trying to get the next step from me because that's what's holding you back is thinking that you always need the next step and it's going to yeah. come from outside. I love what Leaf said, though, about trying to fail. That's awesome. I'm totally going to advise that because I just see so many people who are at that stage who are like, I just I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready. I'm so scared. And, I, and like, you know, I was using that example of Periscope because I was waiting and I was waiting. But Allison's right. It was like my big step took. <laughs> took two years and it took getting fired twice for me to be in a place where I was ready to be like, okay, I'm done with this. Like I'm not, I'm not dealing with this game anymore because it's not me and I don't even like it. Um, but I had to be in the mental place to do that. So that was a longer term, but then I, you know, there's those short term things and taking those little baby steps because like the day I got fired, I registered soulful selling bootcamp. Um, and I took a picture and I sent it to our group. <laughs> Allison was part of that. Um, and that, but it took me a long time to get to that place, but you know, and there was a lot of inner, inner and outer work and, but it was also looking and saying the universe is telling me I shouldn't be doing this anymore. Um, getting fired twice. I'd like, cause I didn't get it the first time. <laughs> I needed to get fired a second time to really like dig it in. But then I paid attention. I mean, I could have gotten another job. I mean, absolutely. Um, but I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing it anymore. Not, not participating. One of the things that I think a lot of people might not want to hear, but I have yet to see it. And one of the things that I love that you did, Christine, is you put yourself in a situation where you have to make it. <laughs> yeah, I kind of do. Right. Like you, you're, you're the primary Burn breadwinner bugs. for your family. You, you, as you're starting this business, you're doing a few little money projects. Mm -hmm. They're not huge money projects, but little consultancies here and there to help some people out to bring in some cash while you're building the big thing. I hope you don't mind. I'm sharing all your secrets, oh, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> too late. And Interesting. I know her enough to know business that I hated it now, so I don't think they're all going to be talking right now. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. You cut your, you cut your safety net. Yeah. And it's very and interesting to see part. when people have a safety net, they use it. And yeah. when you put yourself in a position of not having a safety net. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, there's the little fail of hearing no from somebody, right? So Leap was talking about, like, we set out to fail. Um, and then there's the the big fail of never making any money, it not financially working. Mm -hmm. And so you give yourself permission to have all those little fails so that you don't have that this isn't working fail, <laughs> right? And those are the people that I see that, um, especially in those first three years of business, that's when the hustle is required. That's when you do what it takes. That's when you, yep. I saw one of my former colleagues or former coaches who's now a colleague 
um, worked with her about four years ago and she had put out an email and she and a girlfriend of hers were talking and they were talking about the time on task, the time it took. And we talked about this and share your heart, show your work. You know, it's 20% creating what you do, but 80% sharing it with the world. Yep. <laughs> and most people don't want to do that. They don't want to talk about themselves. They don't, they don't, but they're thinking about themselves instead of thinking like, listen, because I do this, you other people are getting blessed. They're not seeing the reverse. They're not seeing. Yeah. So what if somebody says no? And I love right. the 80% number. Cause that, I mean, essentially all that sharing is sales. And I, um, I interviewed this woman who's in, net, in network marketing and she said, that's how they're trained. I asked her what percentage of your time do you spend in sales? She's like 80%. And David, weren't you telling me like 50%, like Steve Chandler was saying like 50% or something like that. On sales? Um, yeah. Time spent on sale on sales. Yeah. So, well, I was in a Steve Chandler program and there was a guy who said, you know, when you get into business and you're a coach or consultant and you're, you're coming from that place of wanting to serve the world in your heart, all you think about is, right. okay, I'll coach people, but you got to think about half your calendar needs to be filled with right. sales calls right. or enrollment calls or conversations, and it doesn't whatever you want to call them. Just be sharing it's like, your, oh, your or shit more. online or, you know, wherever it is, but being out there. Yeah and exposing yourself because if you're not doing that, no one knows anything about you or, you know. Well, it's just like, for example, this, this blab here, you know, we've got 13 people here. We've had 38. I can see all the numbers. It's awesome. And I remember being on these things so many times going, you know, just like mesmerized by seeing people be on there. Now I'm, and it's really no big deal to be right. on here once you've done it enough. But one thing I've realized is when you do these things, like what you see here, I am always thinking now, okay, I need to share it. I need to share it on Facebook. Right. I need to share it on Twitter. I need to send to an email. Is Christine sharing it? Who's going to get people? Otherwise, yeah. nobody would come. And so often what I want everybody here to realize that is about that first little step. It's like, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to do it. <laughs> and why did nobody come? And it makes sense because we all have to go through that. We don't realize that we have yeah. to sell it, a.k.a. share it, a.k.a. Yeah. put the word out. Right. And to remove the dirtiness from that sales yeah. word, like what we talked about, just sharing it. We're just put getting out there and being who we are. And I always tell people, here you we can are. have a cocktail <laughs> party at your house, just wanted people, people you're going to have a lot different response. Yeah, totally. Because, oh, I'm having a party at my house, but you don't tell anybody. No one's going to show up to your party. And you're and that I see that happen all the time. Mm -hmm. All the time. All the time. And yeah. so, if you at least say, hey, I'm having a party, then someone might say, hey, what about that party? But the more you're like, hey, Christine, I'm having a party Friday night. Do you want to come over? Will you come? Yeah. Yes. No. Will you come? And if they say no, I don't take it personally. Yeah, of course. You know, that that's the other thing I um is not taking failure personally. It's not failure. It's just so every, what does Varian's mama say? They have the right to not like you. They have the right to say no. It's not, it's okay. And we did a fun little experiment on class with a, just a poll in the room, you know, like how many people we did a little, I don't know, made it up. How many people used Amazon today? And it was like out of 17 people, four people had actually used Amazon, which meant that, uh, 12, whatever it was, 14, 14 <laughs> 13 people had said no to Amazon that day, mm -hmm. but everybody knows that, you know, it's that 2% conversion rate. Right. right. And so if people will realize that 2% is the natural conversion rate and that 3% right. is an amazing conversion rate, yeah. that means you've got to get 97 no's before you get a yes. Yeah, I have, a, I have a website I'm waiting to use a uh, domain I'm sitting on called 99failures.com. Oh, awesome. that's good. It's like it's that final, you know, I, oh my God, I'm bubbling with so many things. So I wanted to, I noticed that a lot of new people came in. So I wanted to summarize some of the great tips that I've been hearing, uh, what we've been saying about how do you get yourself out there? And, you know, so David, you know, was talking about uh, getting getting past looking for someone else to push you into doing it and like really finding that idea inside yourself. Um, we've talked about how important it is to not be afraid of failure and to just, or recognize one way I might say it is to realize for me, there's really no such thing as failure. There's only things that you haven't yet recycled. It's like, there's no such thing as waste. There's just things that we haven't found a way to recycle yet. So yeah. by recognizing you really can't Gosh. fail. And like Allison was talking about, or, and actually Christine was really talking about this too. 
that what people want is they want you, like your full you. Mm -hmm. So if that's you floundering a bit, but you're staying in it and you're being authentic, oh my God, we're gonna fall so in love with you because you're just being real and authentic and transparent and vulnerable and so delicious. You know, but, but being you is also you being in touch with what you're really passionate about. So when you're afraid to go out in public, whether it's something like this or it's uh, a, you know teaching a class or whatever, it's because you're you're focused on yourself. Now, if you can focus on yourself of what what it is that you if if you have something that you really think is of value and you shouldn't be in a business if you don't have something that you think is of value, and you're aware of that, then you can change your focus to be instead on other people and how you want to give them that value. So just like the cocktail party example that was given, you want people to show up not to validate that you're a cool person, but because you've got the badass drinks and you've got some really cool music and some cool moves and whatever it is for your party. So with your business, you know, you get in touch with what it is that you have a value, what you're passionate about, what you think your magic is. That's what I like to think of it these days. So you've got your magic, magic. Yeah, and then you get in touch with the heart part of that, you know, the soul part of that of how you want you're bursting to help other people experience that magic by focusing on them. You can't, you can't fail because if you go and one person shows up, you're just having a fun time sharing your magic. If a hundred yeah. people show up, you get a hundred people to get to experience your magic, but you're having fun in the process. And then if you do have to learn something, cause you all have to learn to walk, then you get to go back and go, Oh, what can I do next time better? So it like, you can't lose when you're following your heart and you're doing it from that place off the pulpit. Sorry, I just oh, had to say. No, no, don't apologize. It's on oh, mic. Leaf, how do we find out more about you? Where are you? Are, like, uh, sparkguy.com is a new site, but it's it's really in progress. So sparkinteraction.com is probably the better one to go to. Oh, type that in the chat. You want to put it in the chat? Sure. Yeah. Put it in the chat, brother. Um, Good stuff. Yeah, awesome. Uh, and the thing, too, that it's so funny you mentioned cocktail because I'm starting a cocktail club here in Denver because I love having happy hour cocktails with friends. And it's because it's something I love to do. And so it's going to make the invite much sexier. Yeah. Um, and the invitation is is a huge part of it. You know, the energy we bring to it, if it's something we're not excited about, it's like, hey, having this party, some drinks, you want to come? Versus I'm having this awesome party, we're going to have drinks. I love having drinks with my friends. Why don't you come? You're invited. No, different energy, just the energetic part, let alone what are the words in that if our heart's not into it, it's not something that we love to do. And of course, it has to have value for other people to like you were saying, like if you don't have something, everybody has something. So figure it out and create it. Yes. To figure out what that is, because everybody has something. Yeah. So but the invitation is it's like, you know. How, how, how do we make it? It's why it's called invitation, inviting, come with me. You don't have to, if you don't want to. And if, if I see it as an invitation of, I don't care because I'll enjoy it anyways, <laughs> then it's all good. I feel like a little kid. I want to raise my hand. So Leaf just said, I'm over here checking out Leaf sites. Um, okay. I went to one of the ones you linked to earlier and I went to follow you on Twitter and it's not you. He says, I'm feeling a little shy about my ugly sights. I'm in the middle of a personal rebrand. But here's what's so funny, Leaf, and I think you're a great example, is that you showed up here today being you. And so I don't care what your websites look like. I'm enthralled and excited that, you know, that my earlier call quit earlier and I got to come because I wasn't going to be able to be here. And like, you're just so fun to me. I feel like I have met this soul brother. The language you use is so familiar. I mean, these two guys know, do you know, I feel like I'm sitting with somebody like the male version of me. And that's so fun. And then, you know, I go, I scroll down and I see what is life like when you're playing with the divine. And, and so I don't care what your site's like. I've had an experience of you that says, oh, and that's just, you could hear it in Christine's voice a while ago saying, where can we find more of you? Yeah. And it wasn't because of you saying, this is what I do and this is what I sell. It's just who you be. And I think that's, that's what these mediums give us. That's what they give us an opportunity to do is be ourselves and then somehow the universe works out that we get paid for it. And there's some, you know, technical stuff in the middle. But I just wanted to say that site schmites, that'll all get taken care of. But you've given us, you've shown up, you shared your heart, you shared a little bit of your work. 
And now people want to know more. It's the perfect model and example of how this shit works. Yes, yeah. you're a soulful seller. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> and and I, I I get that. And the, and there is that thing though that wants it all to be nice and tied together. Uh -huh. So I make the connection, and I can go and say, go check out my shiny nice website that gets you into my my funnel and like has all this stuff. And but you know, it's like. All those little puzzle pieces, they're just, they don't come along. They, they go at different growth rates, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, but I appreciate that. And uh, to Diane, uh, no, not Diane, sorry, whoever try harder is. Yes, I do Janelle. fucking swear. Janelle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, matter of fact, I have to tell you guys something funny. I'll put the link to this. So when I was speaking at Inbound, like I was telling you about, I, um, Amy Schumer was speaking the night before me. And um, as you know, she's got probably the biggest potty mouth in the, like she's one of the biggest names in, in potty mouth in the business right now. And I swear she possessed me the next morning. I started off and I'm like, I, I was I was super tired. And then because she had sworn so much, I was like, fuck this, <laughs> fuck that. I was like, I'm like, I'm going to have to go back. Uh, part of the speaking at Inbound is they give you a really nice professional on video, but I dropped so many f bombs. I'm gonna have to go back and edit it now. Don't you dare! Well, <laughs> at least for some crowds. I don't know. It's I I declined a gig this year and got some serious flack for it because I have a a talk that I did where I took off all my clothes awesome. and I cussed, and um and, and my body is not the same. You know, ten years ago that body was really pretty naked and now it's a little fluffy and middle-aged <laughs> this guy wanted me to come speak first of all he wanted me to come speak for free and i said well i want you to watch this video and make sure that i'm a fit for your crowd and he said well this is great but the swearing can't happen and i said well then the gig's not for me and it wasn't that i felt like i was compelled to swear but it's that if anybody wants to filter me yes. i'm not a fit exactly. yeah and, I mean and so i don't want to have to be up on stage and fuck come out okay and think, well, Oh shit! I, I should have said that. I find that super encouraging, Allison, and maybe I do need to just decide that because I mean, here I am teaching about improvisation and not being filtered, and and I've been playing a game this last year. I've I've spoken in into you know two crowds over a thousand people, and I and I decided to do my entire talk improvisationally to try and practice what I preach, but to do that really authentically, I had to be open to that possibility, like you said, you know of. Let left fuck, let fuck come out. Oh, let, sorry, sorry. It's supposed to be let. I, let when fuck. I first when I first saw it, I thought it was let, let leaf. <laughs> We're misspelling. Sorry. Leaf, there's your, your <laughs> next one. Replay. Like, every, oh, right? that there. Yeah. Right. I mean, sorry, sorry. It's true because you do get to a place where you can kind of go. I'm going to be picky. I'm going to, you know, if if you're going to have a problem with that. Uh, oh, here's a great example. So I have this deck of cards called Leela cards. So Leela in Sanskrit means divine play. So there are 26 cards to help you kind of have a more creative, playful, spiritual practice and just explore. Well, one of the cards is titled Fuck It. And I brought it to a new age store locally. And the lady looked through them and she's like, oh, my God, I love these. They're amazing. I'd love to sell them here, but I can't. And I'm like, what? She goes, because you have a card that says fuck it. And I'm like, are you really? serious? I go, did you read the card? And she goes, no, I didn't, but I just know I can't. And I go, if you read the card, you'll see it's it's addressing this whole issue that we've separated, you know, we've called the profane not sacred, and we've left anger out of out of our personal development and spiritual development. And she just completely missed it. So thank you, Allison, well, for making. It. There's a whole book called "Fuck It: A, the, a New Spiritual Practice." Yeah, I saw that. About releasing, just releasing attachment is fuck it. It's uh, and the, here's the other thing: Tony Robbins cusses like a sailor on stage, and he is the most successful coach in the world. Good point. And he's the real deal behind the scenes. I've got you know how some people up on the stage. Uh, I don't. David, did you work over there? Work who with Tony? Did you work with Tony Robbins? No, no I've no. got a couple of people who've worked with Tony Robbins. Clients, Tony gets up on stage and and says, "I have a girlfriend that just went to a weekend, and she's like, he says we start at eight, but he might not show up on stage until his energy is ready at nine fifteen, and then he'll go all the way through without a bathroom break until eleven o'clock. He'll drop the f bomb, and you know, if that's not you, obviously people don't want to be doing it, but I'm very big on not filter. When we live this beautifully, un Christine, I think you and I talked about this uh, earlier in the year about an unfiltered, like 
-hmm. just being unfiltered is an amazing way to attract your tribe. And David and I have a colleague um, that uses this concept of tens or ones. And so it's like, I don't want to be a five for anybody. I either want you to love me and think I'm awesome and I'm a 10 plus plus plus, or I want you to think I'm a one out. And being willing to be either loved or hated is such a more interesting game than trying to please everybody and, and fit along. And, um, and that's the opposite, right? Filtering yourself. So we all are filtered and then we're all like exactly the same. I mean, that's just, I mean, who wants to live in that world? Well, exactly. And uh, it's interesting. I saw a guy on a Facebook thread a while back and I can't remember what it was, but uh, some coach was talking about a problem they had or just a struggle. And it was a very authentic post. And he was like, why would I want a coach that, that was having problems? <laughs> and I about choked and I was like, you really think that coaches don't have problems? Dude, yeah, that's everybody is ready movie. for you. <laughs> but you know, he was it was almost like he was saying, I want my coach to to be pansy pretty happy. To be perfect. And um mm -hmm. it just was it was fascinating, right? Because there are still people that that's where their energy is vibrating, is that that's you know, their 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 bubble hasn't blown up yet. But the thing is when the bubble blows up, it's so fucking juicy and good from then on. Um, so yeah, I know we got off only robo coaching for him. Right. Lindsay. <laughs> I love it. Janelle says, Oh my God, he is. So your Twinkie. It's true. Your Twinkie. <laughs> <laughs> so like a twin. Twinkie? Yeah. He's my brother from another mother. All right. Anyway, yeah. well, I'll come right. out and let somebody else come on. Thank y'all for having cool. me in. Yeah, I love yeah, the yeah. conversations that you're creating. You. I love that I got to hop on. I um, want to let somebody else come up here because I can No, I think we have to wrap it up because this is becoming really long. We started at one. <laughs> oh, my God. It's time to pour a drink. Yeah. I'll start to have you on the first field next. And I have to go to, to an amazing new office mm -hmm. space near me. Um, so I'm super excited. So, but thank Leaf, you're so awesome. I'm so glad. Oh, let's so uh, thank you. Thank you yeah, guys for, awesome. Thanks for letting me come in and, and yeah. just do my, my magic and whatever is going on with me right now. And I really appreciate the coaching Allison to go ahead and not be filtered in that way. Let fuck come and, out. Uh, let your fuck shine. <laughs> this, this little fuck of mine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let, gonna it shine. let it shine. Okay, so can we do just a quick sign off from everyone? Can you just say where people can find you? Because I know Leaf, a lot of people want to find out about you and Allison, of course. Um, we were talking about you earlier, but we didn't um, tell people where you could find where they could find you. So I'm Christine. I'm from Soulful Selling Bootcamp, and thank you guys all for joining today. You are awesome, David. You want to um, give a quick um, where people can find you? Yeah, I feel like we're Hollywood Squares, that old show. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> so I'm David. Um, I have uh, Evolution.co. You can just follow me on Twitter on um, here, and you can find out more about that. And uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. Awesome. Um, and I'm Lee Hansen. I've been putting plenty of links up there. I, I'm going to leave a link that um, it's probably the most vulnerable thing I've written in a while, but it was really my my deep heart speaking to who, who if you read this and it resonates, you're someone that I want to connect with. So I'm just going to put it out there. Okay. Yeah. Wait, wait tell, us, but tell us what it is also. Um, it's well, okay. It's, awesome. it's, um, yeah, it's a bit.ly link that's just slash I finally found you. Okay. And it's sort of, it feels like it came out, I woke up at like five o'clock one morning and it felt like sort of a love letter to whoever I'm going to be working with soon. Awesome. So, I can't wait to see that. I just don't know if the messages show up in the replay. That's why I asked. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you can go, you can find me at sparkguy.com. Okay. Or Spark Interaction, blah, blah, blah. So. Awesome. And Allison. All right. I love it. I am Allison Crow. Um, Crow like the bird and Allison with two L's, AllisonCrow.com. And I am a teacher and a coach and a wild artist and a modern day mystic and a shaman and a wine drinker and dog lover and Mission. all around That's crazy cute. All around, all around motherfucker. <laughs> I, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can find me at AllisonCrow.com. I spend a lot of time on Facebook on my personal profile, which is Allison Crow Flanagan, my sweet husband's last name. And I love playing on Facebook and Periscope and blah. That's where, I'm, but I'm I'm on Facebook a lot. 
So you can find me there if you really want to connect. Awesome. Thank you, guys. You've made this, um, I was going to say scope, this lab amazing. So I'll send you guys the replay if you want to post it. Yes, and love to pass it around. Thanks, everyone, for coming. It was great to have you. Great night. I'm, I'm following you guys all here, so hope to see you again soon. Awesome. awesome. All right. Bye, Bye guys.